Okay, so at the end of the last video, we gave a bit of a hint of what an address breakpoint was, and um, here we're going to be covering that in detail. The context now, we're going to look at printf and get all the way down and see where data is put into the transmit buffer register of the UART. So the breakpoint is essentially now being set on an instruction address in program memory. As you can see here with the definition, the address breakpoint is a machine level breakpoint that suspends program execution when a specific program address is accessed. So we're going to see how to use this, how the disassembly listing file works as a way of distinguishing that from the debug disassembly so you understand the difference of these two disassembly files that you see in MPLABX. And we're also going to have a look at the output on the debugger console. Um, just a quick note on when you might use this to view machine state when a specific instruction is executed um, at an assembly level, to view data read to or from program memory by table read or write instructions, or to determine if a program memory location is ever reached. Checking program pointers, for example. Let's dive into the code. Okay, so this is where we left at the end of the last video, and you can see that we actually had a breakpoint here, which was an address breakpoint. And if we look at IO view this time, you can see that our LED is off because LAT A is set. And um, if we run, hit our breakpoint, stepping over this line, turned it on, and we can see that the red outline indicates that this bit has just been cleared and and you can see the pattern as we toggle the lid okay we're going to leave the led alone for now it's done enough and uh, we're going to run to cursor click next to printf run to cursor okay now we're on the printf. What we're going to do now is just keep stepping into. So we go into printf, which in turn calls vprintf. F put C, put char, and now we're into our own generated files. You can see that we're in put char, which is in uart1.c. This calls uart write, and here you can see tx1 reg. So let's copy tx1 reg onto our clipboard. We're going to use that now and go to this assembly. And you see that there's a listing file. Now, again, we always want an action, so it opens a file for us or opens a window. We'll put that disassembly listing file here. Now, you can see that this is generated from the ELF file of the project, and this is part of a build for debugging. We were already in a debug session, so the disassembly listing file was already available to us. Searching for TX1 reg, we can find it here. Now, let's explain a little bit more first what is happening here. These lines with colons are lines of C source code, and you can see that the lines which don't have a colon are actually addresses in program memory. Now, those are addresses of these assembly instructions, and we can see that the number next to the address is the machine code of the instruction and yeah so we can see that here's a line of C source code here is the disassembly for that line of code and um, so the instruction which is actually sending something into the TX1 reg is this instruction here um, well that's the machine code and here is the address so, if we want to set an address, let's just delete what we have, new 
address breakpoint, we're going to put that address. Program ex memory execution is the only option, or we can and we can have a pass counter on that. Okay, so let's run. The disassembly file is not a file to be used in debug, but the uh, debug disassembly is, so you can see that that was open, so that comes into context now, and you can see that, so as we ran again, it synchronizes the debug disassembly with the source. So let's look at the debugger output. debugger console and note that you can see that there's an address breakpoint was hit and it's hit again. Now before we were able to just set an address breakpoint here and you can see that the address is 3A5 so let's remove this breakpoint and just set it by clicking in the glyph margin. So you can see it does pretty much the same thing so let's run again. Again, we hit the breakpoint. Now, looking in the output window, we also hit an address breakpoint, but it's a little less specific. So, a slightly different implementation in the output window. However, now it's just to break on a specific instruction address in our program file. It would be maybe more interesting to see if we could break on any write to the transmit buffer register. And you can see that that TX1 reg has a different address, 11a. So that's going to be a data breakpoint, and that comes up in the next video.